everybody, welcome back to Off the Wall. I'm Mike. And I'm Sol. I'm Bucks. All right, we've all seen Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. We are going to review it. We will do some stuff at the beginning that's a little non-spoilery as best we can uh, for like maybe 30 seconds because there's not a whole lot you can say about this without spoiling it. And then we're going we're gonna to deep dive into this. And we are running the gamut on... Uh, on thoughts and feelings on this movie. Uh, I am going to just start off. Uh, if you guys saw, I posted a short last night when I saw it. Um, I enjoyed it. I had a good time. I laughed when they, when that was supposed to. I enjoyed the action. I enjoyed the designs. Um, I liked the pacing. I, ha- I had a good time at the theater. I- I'm actually looking forward to watching this one again. Um, Boggs, how did you feel? Uh, yes, I... It's in competition with the lowest or my least favorite DC. Uh, sorry, DC. Um, I was looking at your <laughs> uh, Souls t-shirt. Yeah. Um, but no, no, it's in competition with the lowest MCU movie, probably Eternals, I'd say, or in that. Yeah, I really thought I, I thought the whole movie was tiring. Um, it was, I was glad it was only two hours. Um, it was, it didn't prove a point for me like it told a story then you got the post credits and it was a bit pointless so um it was unfunny i felt overly cg um yeah i just i just did not enjoy myself at the theater i can't believe they did some things in this movie which we'll get into obviously but overall yes i did not enjoy it whatsoever and so what about you i am right in the middle of the two of you <laughs> this movie was very very mid for me uh probably if you put it in the like list of mcu movies it'd probably be mid to like lower because of just the amount of good mcu movies that are out there but there's definitely things i liked like uh jonathan majors i really uh enjoyed him as kang and his acting ability he's such a phenomenal actor uh if you guys haven't seen uh the last black man in san francisco like he is wow so good in that uh there's definitely things i disliked slash hated in this movie when uh so i am very much in the middle of the two of you it's i and i i've I've seen and heard some criticisms about this already i kind of stayed away from everything until i saw it because y'all don't know how to behave on the internet stop spoiling stuff please um so so there are some things i've seen that are like okay I, i i get I get the criticism with this or that. We won't get into that stuff when we get into spoilers. But I don't know. For the most part, I, I had fun with it. There were some things in this one that I was glad I got that I felt like we'd been missing, particularly from Ant-Man from his first two movies. Um, ultimately, I just I think that what this movie could have benefited from most was coming out at the beginning of phase four. Because if we're gonna this is the this is the multiverse saga. It feels kind of weird that the big one of the big you know we're dealing with kang in the quantum realm I feel like that should have been at the beginning of the multiverse saga not the beginning of phase five i don't know that's just that's just me personally but uh but i i i really dug it i i, I had a good time with kind of starting in from how i felt finally getting into setting up for where we're going with all of this um tying in some of the other materials we've had up until this point. Um, I don't know. It's not a whole lot. I'm trying so hard not to spoil something because we're so early into the video, but I think we might just need to. Yeah, let's, let's go get with spoilers. So, all right. Yeah, so, spoilers. Here we go, everybody. Spoiler alert. There you go. We're there. Um, uh, Modoc. <laughs> I want to get this one out of the way. I feel like I, I was not a fan of how they used Modoc in this. Um, I, but I also feel like Modoc is such a silly, ridiculous character that people had been kind of clamoring for for a while. This almost felt like a, okay, there, we did it. Stop asking us kind of thing. Like they did it to do it. And then they can say, now we never have to do it again. But ultimately, he doesn't really serve a purpose and he's just kind of ridiculous uh, for the most part. Uh, Boggs, what about you? <laughs> Yeah, I can't believe they put out that um, the the CG for his face, and I don't know that they yeah. need to make it kind of silly anyway. Like with his mask down, I thought it was, he looked he looked fine. Like I didn't have an issue with that, even with the kind of silly arms and you can see his you know his butt and everything. I, I didn't mind that. That that was okay. Yeah. Um, but when he had his mask off, I, I can't believe they done that. Like 
how terrible that looked completely unfunny throughout the whole movie um like i didn't even rec like i know they were saying darren but i i could not see that guy the actor Corey Stoll. The character, yeah yeah i could yeah. not like that's not that guy like i was adamant in my own head like that wasn't the same guy like they don't look anything alike almost and um the character arc at the end like the redemption thing i like i was shocked the way that they redeem him, you know, this is a character, um, obviously Darren in the first movie, you know, I rewatched both. At my movie. I was excited for this movie. You know, you guys know this. Yeah. And um, I watched, rewatched both of my movies, you know, a day or two before watching uh, Quantumania. And, you know, everyone in the movie tries to convince him not to go ahead with the whole yellow jacket thing, you know, whether it's uh, Hank Pym, whether it's Hope, whether it's Scott Lang, whether it's the, the guys within the, him company might you can help me out with the name i forgot the name board members but, yeah yeah the board members and stuff which he kills and stuff so they're all trying to help him as soon as cassie said to him don't be a dick that's all it took and then he switched sides i thought oh, is this like a joke or something and um she she was uh, i'll come to cassie but she was the moral kind of guide for everyone in the movies supposedly a 17 year old girl and she's clearly 20 at least 25 I don't know how, like, that was, that completely stood out to me. How is she supposed to be 17 is beyond me. Um, but, yeah, that, that just summed up my uh, frustrations with this movie. Uh, however, I did actually laugh at the at his death scene when he's saying, oh, at least I died in Avenger. That did get a full laugh from me. Yeah. And Hope's like, yeah, you, you did it, buddy. You did it. Like, I, that did get me a little bit. I, I'm not going to lie. Because, you know, how, how stupid he looks as well. I, it just the yeah. whole, I was just laughing at what I was seeing. So, um, yeah, apart from that, I mean, I, that that's honestly Modoc's kind of the least of my problems in this movie. Yeah. It was completely ridiculous. It looked stupid, but um, I had more uh, pressing problems than that. It's kind of why I wanted to get Modoc out of the way first, is just just to be done and over with. Like, I, like yeah, like I said, Modoc. Like these are comic book movies, so there there are some things that are just not going to translate well from comic book to to movie. It's just kind of the way of like. There's a reason we haven't done Kite Man in the DC live action. It's we're we're just not going to. Perfect uh, in Harley Quinn though. It's great in Harley Quinn. Um, but with this one, like I didn't need him to be, uh, uh Darren. I didn't need him to be Corey Stoll. He could have just been Modok. There's already clearly beings that exist in the quantum realm. He could have just been some other quantum creature thing it didn't need to be this tie-in redemption for an objectively pretty terrible person um yeah i didn't I just modok did nothing for me in this so what about you so when i wrote like my likes and dislikes and my notes uh my dislike i literally just wrote modok <laughs> like i didn't even have to go because i just did not like any part about him i could understand why they make him darren and I can understand why Modoc would work better in the quantum realm than on Earth currently right now with the way the MCU is. But oh my gosh, I just I just hated him in the movie. And the second that Cassie Lang said, "Don't be a dick," and that was what changed him. I was rolling my eyes so hard they were almost out of my skull. <laughs> like yeah. the fact that that is what changed him that's such bad storytelling i was like this is not a redemption arc like literally go watch avatar last airbender with zuko and see how to do an actual redemption arc because this was not it and i just disliked him the whole movie yeah like he just needed to just be a weird mechanical creature we could have just watched kang treat him like shit for the whole movie yeah. and then have cassie just be like why you let him treat you like this like you can you can you know stand up for yourself and and then he could have it would have felt a little bit more earned other than just hey just, just don't be a dick and he's just like even you know then, what? i won't be a dick and, and and yeah even then though i don't think he deserves a redemption arc even if it was like that he tried to kill a child her as a child two yeah. weeks ago it, it didn't need him to be redeemed I, I don't need every villain to be redeemed i'm fine with the villain just being a villain it's fine i'm cool with it um so uh let's talk about some of the actors in this one uh we had the full cast returning um i personally thought michelle pfeiffer was stellar in this i really enjoyed michelle pfeiffer in this one um i liked how much of the story she was a big part of i actually thought this was some of 
just a really good acting performance from her. Um, and I, I liked her getting to see her kind of be this sort of like uh, former maverick like uh, scavenger that was living on her own for 30 years and just the survival skills that she developed over time. Um, Boggs, what about you? How'd you feel about uh, Michelle Pfeiffer being kind of the, the through line in this one? Yeah, I'm sure every review is probably saying the same thing, but I couldn't believe how good she looked for her age. Like, fine, like <laughs> awesome. Like, um, I think she's obviously in her sixties and stuff. So yeah, credit to her. And uh, yeah, we all know that Michelle Pfeiffer is a good actress. Like that is nothing new that like her acting is fine in the movie. Um, but the way they've written her, like that, I couldn't believe that she didn't tell them about the whole Kang situation. And she continuously didn't tell them throughout, like we're an hour in and you're still saying, I can't tell you what's happening in the quantum realm and how she did it. She never told Ant-Man or anyone, yo, there's this guy in the quantum world. He can destroy our whole universe and all the other universes. Like, oh, am I hearing this? Like, is this what they've put out? Like, I could not believe um, how bad that was, but her acting was overall fine. You know, she, uh, but I will say that, you know, she, she got a lot of screen time, like way more than I thought that she would have. And um, she, she kind of like, I felt like, Scott was moved to the side a little bit in this movie for Janet and Cassie uh, and their storylines over his, you know, he, he was like, um, you know, and even at the end when he, you know, he's doing the whole kind of when he's back in San Francisco and he's walking around and then he has that realization, Oh, was it my fault? Or, you know, what have I done? And he snaps back out of it, whatever. And I was thinking, no, it's her fault. It's Janet's, it's literally Janet's fault. It's not your fault. You've done nothing wrong. You know, at the start of the movie, they said, you are a hero. And, you know, he's getting trapped like a hero. And I thought, yeah, he should do. Yeah, he, you literally saved the world. Good. And, you know, you've done it again, kind of, at the end. But why do you feel bad? It's Janet's fault, literally. She's never told anyone about Kang, the conqueror, the world destroyed. Like, yeah, I had so many problems with this movie on so many different levels. But her performance was okay, I guess um and uh, yeah she got uh obviously a lot of screen time which was a surprise but uh, yeah uh does that answer your question it, it, yeah it does um <laughs> I, I i as far as like i will say i definitely think hope got pushed to the sidelines on this oh one. Definitely, yeah. definitely i'm calling yeah. a movie ant-man and the wasp quantum mania the wasp ain't yeah. in the wasp is janet the, yeah. the wasp is not Very evangeline uh yeah. <laughs> lily it is uh, I think it, in this movie. evangeline lily is pretty much in every scene but she's not doing anything she's just yeah. there she's yeah. like no story exactly. arc no character development she's just there she's there to save scott basically uh, yeah. you know and fight with him kind of thing that's it she's kind of been mom. Like, yeah well, <laughs> yeah yeah, was, yeah she's, she's, yeah. she's, she's been my my kind of like through, through line issue with like and i like all the ant-man movies I, I love them all but like she's always been the one thing i've had the hardest time with evangeline lily because like I don't buy her and Scott. Uh, like, there's no chemistry whatsoever between two of them in all three movies. And they spend so little time on screen together. At the end when they're hugging and saying, I love you. I remember having a moment of like, oh yeah, they are a couple. Uh, that's right. Mm. Forgot about that. Um, so what about you? We, we, we were talking about Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, um, what'd you yeah. think? So yeah, I will say that Ant-Man and the Wasp, the Wasp was not Evangeline mm. Lilly. Uh, the person outside of Greece. Uh, <laughs> it was definitely uh, Janet. And we all know Michelle Pfeiffer is a great actress. Like, I'm literally going to be repeating what Bog said. <laughs> but the fact that she kept that secret, especially when they went into the quantum realm, I can understand not talking about it once you came back to the surface of Earth. But the fact that you're in the quantum realm, you know that he's a threat. You know that he could bring harm to the people you love and you're still like i'm keeping this a secret and you're like i'm doing it to protect you goes no not saying anything is literally making it more dangerous for the people you love and it was just no reason for her to keep it to herself for that long it was really annoying and then the fact that when she finally says it like there wasn't a like action or anything that made her go oh i fuck, I need to tell you now. It was literally like, oh, we're on the ship. We're, we're traveling. Might as well say it now. Like there was no like narrative reason for her to keep it that long and no narrative reason for when she finally actually said it. And that was really annoying to me. 
I, I'd push back just a little bit. I think the narrative reason they gave was she knew that like now that we're here, we have a finite, small finite window to find Cassie and and Scott and get the safety. Like like we need to do. Like I'll tell you everything once we're at a point where we're not rushing to get the hell out of here. You can't once walk and talk at the same time. <laughs> She's got to navigate. She's got to keep an eye out for threats. She knows what's out there. They don't. And it's easier to just deal with the problem than, okay, let's take time and sit here and talk about it while the problem could be coming to us. Let's get ourselves away from the problem. Then I'll explain what's going on. It was, it was, it was prioritizing. And this was a, you know, I'm sure traumatizing moment for her to be back in this place where she scraped by for 30 years facing God knows what kinds of threats. She was in survival mode at that point. She was in get the get the job done, sur- survive, and get to a point where then we can actually breathe and have that conversation. But I think to push back, there's so many moments when they're like just standing still in the bar, waiting to like or doing this or that, where she could have said like she didn't have to go full into detail, but be like, "Hey, there's this guy named King, like, and this is what's happening." And that that just takes a quick second, and then you can go full into the explanation when you're on the ship traveling. The fact that she just yeah. had nothing at all was just like it's a secret. <laughs> yeah, but I can I can also see the motivation for like I'd rather give you the whole story than part of the story. Like I'd rather give you the whole thing in context than oh hey by the way there's this guy but I'm not gonna say anything more about him for another like like I'd rather just say okay here's the time where I can just tell you the whole thing and have their just just answer all the questions at once rather than having to pepper it every few minutes like just let's just wait until we're safe I'll tell you everything let's just knock it all out at once. Bob, you're giving me a look. <laughs> no, no, uh, no. I, it's the whole. It's such a ridiculous argument. What you guys are having, like the <laughs> these guys, the Avengers saved the world. Why are you not telling them that Kang is there in the quantum? Realm? And like Scott is in Endgame, tr- like after you've come back in Ant Man of the Wasp, where I'm talking about Janet. You know that he's trying to get back into the quantum realm, and you've not said anything about Kang being True. there. Again, like it's just so irritating how this is written. I think it's so badly written this movie, unbelievable. And yes, so to add to your point, I was thinking exactly the same thing. You can walk and talk because they would stop and ask her, "Mom, tell me the plan, Janet. What is going on? Please give us an up." Like because there was people coming to them and saying, "Oh, he is here," or you know, giving them indications about can. And they didn't have a clue because of Janet's not telling them. It happened like several times, and it kept happening. And um. But yeah, I, I do understand what you're saying. Like, you can't at that point be like, "Oh, by the way, there's someone called Campbell." I'll tell you later. But we'll just get to here. And yeah, it was just a mess. It, it was a big mess. And um, you should have told them before. Even at, when Cassie's trying to get into the quantum realm, and and uh, yeah, she didn't. She, what? So, and she just didn't know that. And like Hank did, and Hope did, but she didn't. And she didn't say that. You know, um, Kang's there. You shouldn't do. I don't know. It's just. It's. It's so dumb. To debate honestly it's just uh uh yeah you, you'll end up just going on and on in your own head about different <laughs> scenarios what you could have done etc so. well we've, we've mentioned his name about a thousand times let's talk about kang jonathan majors in this thing uh, uh soul i'm gonna go to you first what you think about uh go to our, our boy kang in this i i liked him i liked uh jonathan major as king i liked him more than i did in uh the final uh episode of loki which I know Boggs hated Loki. I liked the show, but I thought it ended really weird. It was like a weird last episode to like introduce He Who Remains King like that. So to finally like get to see Jonathan Majors and he's a phenomenal actor and just the way that he was acting. There was also a moment too where like his like clothes were ripped and you could see like how shredded he's become. And I'm like, oh, that's your Creed 3 body right there. Like you have been working out and that kind of made me go how the hell is anyone beating him because he looks just so much stronger and better and more powerful than anyone else so i really enjoyed him in the movie but it was one of those like i don't buy him getting beaten by like eventually lily's wasp <laughs> like so yeah, given the circumstances i get i mean we see we saw him get get beat by sylvie and Loki. I mean, and we know now there's yeah. a million different 
Kangs out there, the council, the, the council of Ricks from Rick and Morty, now the council of Kangs. Um, Boggs, what about you? How'd you feel about Jonathan Majors as Creed in this? Uh, as Creed, um, or as Creed as Kang. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's coming in two weeks. So I was, know. <laughs> uh, um, it's the same guy. Same guy. Same guy. Same thing. Um, so yeah, obviously Jonathan Majors is one of. If I could like put a list of top ten favorite actors at the moment, he'd be in it. Um, you know, I think he's great, super talented. Uh, he's got such a high caliber, honestly. Um, but I, I think it's a deflection thing for people to, for them to talk about how good he is in the movie because he's almost got nothing to do apart from a few menacing lines or, or times not what you think. He doesn't like we, he spoke about this whole multiverse. Uh, you know i can control time go in and out thing in loki he's done it again here we've not seen any of it okay he's also um we didn't we like why is he called kang the conqueror exactly he conquers planets and universes and stuff we haven't seen that and janet when she touched the dial or whatever it's called sorry i forgot the name for 10 seconds we got a five to ten second flash of what he's done why can't we see that why why is he so big and threatening uh, and then in the end, obviously, he's been there for X amount of time. What it, obviously, for Janet, it's 30 years. He manages to create an empire. It's taken down within 15 minutes by ants. And, you know, and you're right, Mike. He gets beaten by Sylvie in, in Loki, the series. He gets beat by Ant-Man and the Wasp here. Um, the only power we saw him have was with his blue lasers going pew, 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 and killing a few extras. Like, so what? Like, how is this guy supposed to be better than thanos or it's supposed to lead the next saga of phase five or be you know as cool as intimidating he just wasn't he's just not he's not giving it enough to do here it's it's not the threat isn't there he's not interesting enough and by the end obviously i'm going to cut to the end where we see the council of kangs as you said and then we see him again in loki like the council of kang we know he's already said there's so many variations of me we know that that's not a surprise and we know he's in loki season two because of the end of, of loki or, you know, we didn't 100% know, but you could take a guess. So we know he's in that. We know he's going to come back there. So what exactly is the point of this story? Like, he's there, he's beaten by Aunt Man and stuff. And then, it, and then, okay. And it just leads to, like, an endless cycle of, okay, we're going to get this same. Like, if you are a casual film girl watching this movie, like, okay, Kang, he, he seemed, okay, he seemed kind of menacing, and then he's beaten. Oh, he's back again. Like, what are you, like, it's just like an endless cycle. Like, Again, I don't think it was, he had the best stuff to do. He wasn't well written and he just doesn't seem that scary or intimidating or menacing for me, as opposed to other MCU villains. Um, I was very disappointed with what they were giving to us. We haven't seen, like, yeah, I like Jonathan Majors, but I do not like Kang. He's not interesting enough and he's not threatening to me at all. So um, yeah, unlike most people where, you know, they do say, like, we know he's a world-class actor. Like uh, I can list off five movies right now where, is so much better than this, uh, what he's given here. So, um, but like that aside, is not a good villain for me. And I, he because he wasn't given the work to do in the movie. I thought he was very scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we know he can project menacing. I have yeah. seen dozens of times before. I have because I've I like him as an actor. Maybe other people mm. haven't. That's fine. But mm. we know he can do that. That's like he's scratching the surface with this guy. So. Uh, for people that say like, "Oh my God, he was so scared!" Like this is nothing. Like you see him be villains in in other movies, he's so much more interesting. So I was good, to be honest. I was absolutely good at what they've given us with Kang. I will have to agree though with Boggs on the sense of like, you see the beginning with him and Janet, which I will side note like Janet and King had way more chemistry than Janet and Bill Murray. Um, <laughs> like if you would have said like Janet had a thing with King. <laughs> And not a thing with Bill Murray. I thought they know, were going to say that. I thought they were yeah. going to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what but, I was waiting for. Yeah. Um, you get that, and then you get the fast forward of after he conquered. And obviously, this is not his movie. This is called Ant Man and the Wasp. But I would have liked to see how he became like basically the conqueror of the quantum realm. And we didn't really get to see any of that. And I thought that would have been cool to see, but I kind of understand why it wasn't done. But I wish that it was done. I, I, I get why they haven't played their full hand yet, I think, with Kang, because, you know, to use the Thanos comparison, we, we didn't get anything really with Thanos un until Infinity War. 
We yeah. had we had the post credit scene for the Avengers. We had a scene in the first Guardians and a lousy post credit scene at the end of Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, we got nothing. We had to we had to meet and learn all about Thanos and Infinity War. Um, yeah. With Kang, they're all we've seen a lot more of him at this point than we did with Thanos, um, yeah. and I think the simple fact that this council of kangs exists is part of what's so terrifying it's because how do you eliminate someone who exists in all forms and all realities Mm -hmm. who in every reality has you know the idea of multidimensional travel and to see see all of time he's learned how to do this in every reality like that is that is scary that there's this, for lack of a better term, omnipotent being who in every facet of the multiverse and, and point in time has existed, um, which I think is why we get the post credit scene with Loki and and, Mor- and not Morbius, Mobius. <laughs> Morbius is a different movie. Uh, we, that, Loki, that would have been interesting if Morbius Loki, was there. Loki and Mobius at the end, like, you know, because obviously we don't know the full story of Lo- Loki season two yet. We're going to get that, I'm sure, soon. Yeah. Um, but it's it's clear that the look in Loki's eyes, like he is scared terrified. of this. He is terrified. And I think that's kind of what I was getting alluding to earlier, which is like this is gonna be the first time that like we've had, along with like the Marvels coming out later this year, where it's it's the movies and the shows directly affecting each other mm-hmm. um, in that way, where something that was set up in Loki is now leading into Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania and is now going to go back into Loki season three and start taking us towards when we eventually get to get to the Kang dynasty. I think though too with like Kang versus Thanos kind of thing where when Thanos was fully introduced the first time in Infinity War, you see him defeat Thor and I was say Hulk. Cool. Yeah. 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 And uh, where, Loki as well. Yeah. And Loki where Kang, he's the big bad and he's been defeated by Sylvie and defeated by Ant-Man and the Wasp in this. It, although I will agree that seeing like the Council of Kings and the fact that you can't, like even if you kill him, you're not killing this guy. And that's a terrifying thought for the universe. And it's made me excited for what comes like next with him. But it's one of those things where you can see like the good parts, but it was just like not executed well for me and therefore you're like oh but that's gonna pay off so well later but i would like this has become like the mcu tv show where this is an episode instead of being a full story Mm. where we're not gonna get the payoff until years later it's kind of like with thor the dark world that became a better movie after endgame where when that movie first came out, everyone was like, oh, that movie was shit. Like, it's still not a great movie, but it's better. It's not a little bit. It's still not that yeah. great. It's, it's, it's better, better than this. It's better than Quantumania. I'll tell you I, that. I yeah. disagree with that. Uh, um, but, I'll say on that yeah, point, so, um, I, I actually don't think that's a positive, where you guys are saying that, you know, the, the endless amount of Kang's there. Because I think if you're an average moviegoer, going to see these movies that where you used to go and watch uh, mcu movies where you got told one story and yes that it, it was the infinity saga and it did connect as a whole you know with thanos and everything and the infinity stones etc but when you went to see um i don't know black panther you got one story when you went to see ant man and the wasp you got one simple story when you went to etc etc right now you're getting these series and movies that are all uh, mystery boxes and then we get something like this, Quantumania, which starts off season five. They told us, Kevin Feige told everybody, this starts off season five. This is a must watch. This is the most important movie after Endgame. And then at the end of it, the big bad's defeated by two goofy characters. Let's be honest, Ant-Man and the Wasp, they are. They're not the most serious characters in the MCU. I, I like them, don't get me wrong, but they are goofy. Um, they're beaten by them. And then at the end, they, he's still around. So it's just going to be an endless, tiring cycle for for everybody unless you know you're you're deep into comics and you know this stuff even then it's still the way that they're doing it is just it's tiring it's seriously tiring where you're going to get him again in loki and then he's going to be in a movie and then he's going to come back and like it's it's so for me it's not as menacing because it's it's never ending 
Um, so, and we, we don't see an endgame. Like we knew that Infinity Stones were being connected, but I thought we, we knew that. Like what is Kang doing? Like who knows? It's, it's so tiring and um, it's, it's massively frustrating for me, Mike. I, th I think the I think the never ending side of it I think is what is the part to me that is so intimidating because it's like like how do you win a fight that never stops like how do you how do you how do you how do you end a war when there's no when the, when the enemy is just going to keep coming like there's no there's no end to to the to the uh, to the, the coming threat that's I think the part that has me going like mm, that's scary because if mm -hmm. you know because Th 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 Thanos is one dude. Thanos was one dude with yeah. an army that there was a finite number of them. Kang, there's, there's, there's never going to not be a Kang. How do you, how do you, how do you bring it into that? That's the part that I think that has me going like, that's frightening because it's, it's, it's essentially, it's a, it's, it's like the concept of like a holy war. It's like, it's, it's a war that'll never end, you know? But if I'm man in the wasp can beat him and Sylvie kind of. It's like, yeah, we'll just whoop him each time he comes oh, back, the, kind of thing. The Sylvie ones, I mean, not literally, but yeah. well, this the Sylvie <laughs> one's interesting because remember, he wanted to die, he was like, Kill me, yeah, yeah, right, right. please yeah. go ahead. Think, too, it was it was not fully Kang, it was he who remains, and I think he was not as powerful and strong as Kang Kang. He who remains was just tired, like he was, he, he was like, I'm over it. Yeah, I've seen too much. Put me out of my misery. coming now. I honestly <laughs> wish I thought like you did, Mike. I wish I was excited by that <laughs> instead of being like eye rolling. Like when I saw them post credits, I wish I just walked out. And when it said directed by Peyton Reed, I wish I walked out oh, then no. because yeah, it was like they kept me there for two hours, and then at the end, I've waited an extra five, ten, fifteen minutes, and then they just told me it's an endless cycle. Like, is that it? Like, um, yeah, I was just bitterly disappointed by them post-credit scenes in particular but yeah i wish i thought like you did mike to be honest well guys we've been we've been talking about this movie for about 30 minutes now you know we, we've hit a lot of the bigger points you know jonathan majors is kang we've talked about the you know a lot of our pros and cons um ultimately like i want to give just kind of give everybody just one last chance to, to to share their overall thoughts on this bring up any any other points they may uh want to make uh boggs we'll start with you man like i know i know you really just did not have a good time with this one um is there anything you want to say to kind of wrap up how you feel or any additional points you feel like maybe you didn't get to make yeah man so uh, i'll say the positives just to be you know not to say that it was absolutely disgusting or anything it didn't like personally offend me or anything like that um, but the positive <laughs> uh, the positives were i would say that before they went to uh, the quantum realm like how scott was you know being portrayed in san francisco I, I thought was fine you know i thought yes this is you know he's a low level avenger you know he's just being treated well by everyone he's a bit of a hero he's doing a book signing like and to be honest for them first wherever it was 20 minutes that's the most i've been in an audience where or in a theater where the audience has been laughing like hysterically laughing for almost 20 minutes non-stop i couldn't believe it like people having a great time i thought right we're in and then as soon as i heard uh cassie was um was uh read her grandpa grandpa's notes of how to get back to the quantum realm i said you what you're 17 how do you know how to get back to the i knew we were in trouble from there to be honest um i thought because she's an activist as well that was a first kind of red flag she's an activist who got locked up and freed or whatever then she came then she <laughs> then she's a scientist now uh, she has a suit she could fight She's given everyone uh, moral uh, guidance throughout the movie. And she was, you know, she had, she, they were having a go at Scott. You know, Scott was telling everyone, you know, I saved the world. I'm an Avenger. You know, I'm kind of enjoying it. You know, let me kind of just, um, just give me time to just be a hero and be a celebrity or whatever. And then I want, so what are you doing now, Dad? Like, I'm helping the, like, it, but to, as well, in that actual storyline, that what she got arrested for, that's kind of interesting. I felt like with the, the pe the homeless people via the blip and they're arguing with the people who now have had i thought okay what like is that going to be a story and then they just never went anywhere so okay fine forget it um cassie was the worst character in the movie for me i had she's so adorable in ant-man and i'm on the wasp like she that little girl who plays her absolutely fantastic she was such a good chemistry with with um you know paul rudd and she's adorable and she's exactly what the movie needs is super light-hearted high smooth in here, I don't know what's happened, and 
she's it's her movie she's absolutely terrible i didn't like the acting from her at all um when they first entered the quantum realm the first kind of 10 or 15 minutes i did somewhat enjoy you know um some of the cg with it and seeing some of the characters you know here and there you know the guy with the uh, telepathy and uh who the the guy with the ooze and stuff i did initially laugh at all this yeah. stuff and then yeah and mm -hmm. then um the more it went on the more it just kind of uh it just it just seemed more and more unbelievable there was no depth to the world um it just kept going on and on and there was no um it, it just it just seemed like they were in front of green screen more and more and in the volume or whatever it's called um they just it, it was too fantastic at times and yeah with the whole uh obviously the the when scott goes kind of big and they fight uh kang and everything and they have all the kind of rebels there and all of that like i there was an him and Cassie are both big and they're hugging and there's no scale or anything like so you can't tell how big they are yeah they've got some kind of audio thing going on so you can t so it's in slow motion but they're not matched up against anything like in the previous Ant-Man movies it was always earthbound you know they were always in a bathroom you know in a school you know on the street so you can always tell and you're always amazed at like the, the scale and the effects being used here it's a random you know CG place you just it completely didn't work um so i was majorly frustrated by the whole thing and like i said by the end it was oh okay he's you know he's still around it got sucked sucked through that whole ship thing and he's still around he's still back and um i i feel like you don't even need to watch the movie you just need to watch loki uh last episode and watch loki season two and that's it that you know who kang is um yeah unfortunately i was looking forward to it but very very disappointed in it and um you know as silly as it sounds i missed his crew you know michael penner's character ti and the other guy like they they brought humor to the movies and you know they're needed in the first movie as a part of his crew and the second one they're just there for humor but like they bought genuine funny things it, you know the light-heartedness of it they weren't there and it's like i before this movie i would have never said that like I, I'd, I'd say that i'm glad they're gone but now like i kind of want to be back in that kind of funny goofy realm that they're in so uh overall no i did not have a good time with it and this is supposed to kick off the, the big start of phase five and i felt it was a big flop and um I, and i to be honest, personally i mean we'll see i don't think it will be do be doing too good at the box office um and i don't think that's a surprise now i want michael pena in the quantum realm i was just about <laughs> to say i want i want michael pena to drink the goo i want to see michael pena with jen thora i think that would be really funny well, what's funny is David Desmalchin, who who uh, played Kurt in the first two, is the voice of Bev, the right. little slime guy. Yeah, it's wonderful. I want him so, to hang out with with, with Michael Pena. Just yes. like I want Michael Pena to annoy everyone in the Quantum Mania so much yes. they like to get the goo out of him. Like we don't want to know what you're saying anymore. <laughs> Last point. <laughs> Last point. I, I don't know for me if I missed something or if it was a it's a plot issue that when the ants came and saved everyone and destroyed Kang, oh my God, I feel so stupid saying that, but when that happened, okay, when they all went to the quantum realm, okay, and the ants went with them, they were gone for like a day or so. So please explain to me how the ants gone there for thousands of years. I, I just didn't just, get, I didn't understand. Time has no meaning. The quantum realm time moves differently depending on right. on where you're at. So the the way that the, the where the ants went through Mm. was only a day for everybody else but for them they mm. lived a thousand years and they were already like they had said in the beginning of the movie they were like modified ants that hank had been working on so they were already like mm. hyper intelligent and so mm. that they went through this whatever bubble in the quantum realm lived a thousand years kind of like in dragon ball z where they go in the time chamber for like a day and it's like a year mm. wow that's the nerdiest thing i've ever said in my <laughs> life um or so it's similar it. to between Scott Lang and um, Janet Van Dyne, where Janet was uh, aged in the quantum realm and Scott didn't when he was stuck there. Remember, he came out, it had been five years on Earth, but it had been five hours for him in the quantum realm. Right. And for her, it was 30. But I didn't yeah. get how they were there for thousands of years. And they didn't just, address it in the movie. They just, they they just, they just, just moved think. Yeah. timey-wimey okay. nonsense yeah <laughs> doctor who timey-wimey yada 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 um yeah, okay i just saw uh, it yeah that, I, I was thinking about that a minute or two after it happened and i was like thousands of years what did, did i miss something like did i just fall asleep and miss a scene or two but yeah uh, i guess that must be the answer 
Uh, Sol, what about you? Any any final thoughts or parting words here? Um, I do want to put some of the extra like liked and disliked stuff that I have in my notes. Uh, I really liked Katie O'Brien as Jen Thora. Uh, mm-hmm. She's badass. <laughs> um, I actually looked her up and she's like a black belt and a former police officer and like a former bodybuilder. So that's why like she just looked so awesome and was able to like have that kind of like authoritative stance that she had with um, her group. Uh, The visuals I really liked, especially like when you first go into the quantum realm. Um, Although like nitpick and Boggs kind of touched it, it did seem a little bit more green screen the longer you went in, which that could probably just be that these movies are coming out so fast and the people that are having to work on them, like after a while, like you can make the beginning part look really, really good and it just gets, because you don't have the time to actually put in more and more work on it. Um, Some actors were a little bit more stiffer than others. You could tell like, yeah, they're acting in front of a green screen where like Paul Rudd probably did the best of like, oh, he his green screen acting, you can't really tell as much that he's in front of a green screen where like Michael Douglas was probably the worst. Like I am in front of a green screen. I don't know what to do. I'm an actor who used to not have to work with these kind of things. And now I'm here in front of a green screen. What is around me? <laughs> like That's what it felt like in some of the areas with him. Um, and I really do not like the fact that Ant-Man and Wasp um, being Paul Rudd and Evangeline literally like coming back. I would have liked it better if they would have stayed in the quantum realm because it kind of seemed a little BS that Cassie okay, the, again? the only <laughs> portal is closing now. That's kind of like a time thing. And then, oh, they're hugging and immediately a portal opens back up for them to go to Cassie's Earth. got it, guys. Don't worry. Cassie's <laughs> yeah. Got it. So for me, it would have felt a better like narratively if they were stuck there again i was kind of surprised and, like oh this is what they're doing they're gonna kill right. not kill them off but leave them now i thought that was kind of cool yeah and then, yeah. yeah it, w- it would have been cool to leave them there and then they could have gotten them out later and it could have been like a quick like thing of getting them out it could even be cassie saving them in another movie or an avengers movie or a fourth yeah. ant-man but the fact that it happened immediately after, like, the high stakes of the portals closing, they're stuck there. Mm-hmm. Evangeline Lily comes back out to save Paul Rudd, and they're stuck. That would have been, that would have given the movie way more stakes. So it's by them agree. being yeah. saved, it kind of took the stakes away from the movie. So I, you know, the thing, the thing I will say about this is, like, I, I hear everyone's criticisms, and, and they're, they're, I totally get it. Um, it just didn't bother me. I guess it, it didn't it didn't bother me that much. I had a good time with this one. Uh, it made me laugh when Ant Man grew giant and was just destroying everything in sight. I was like, "Yes, that's what I would do too. If I had the power to grow eighty feet tall, I would abuse that. Like, oh, yeah. you got an army? I step on your army. Now they're all gone. Like, especially if you're in angry Papa Bear mode." Totally, totally. I was like, yeah, no, that's what Ant-Man should be doing. Ant-Man should be growing giant and just saying no to everything that comes at him. And and I, it was a great action sequence. Um, didn't need MODOK. Um, and Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly have uh, a type of chemistry on screen that can only be described as two people. <laughs> um, they have about as much chemistry as your average uh, news anchors does. Um but ultimately, like Kang was terrifying. The quantum realm looked really cool. Um, I, I, I know we're gonna get to go back there again with with everything they're setting up with the multiverse and um, with Loki season two and all that. So we haven't seen the last of this place. And like, I know it didn't so much for you guys, but for me, this got me super excited for where we're going next with with the multiverse saga well, i'm excited and, and, and and well i'm more excited no, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's, not ex- he's not excited i am you are very I'm very excited, excited. Um, <laughs> I, yeah yeah, yeah it, it was like this was not my top like in my top 10 favorite mcu movies by any stretch of the imagination but i had a good time with it um i'm looking forward to watching it again maybe i'll feel different about it when i watch it again better or worse whatever that may be but um yeah, I remember walking out of the theater. Just I my my first tweet was just, "Well, 
I quite enjoyed that. <laughs> I had a, I had a good time. Um, and ultimately, you know, that's, that's what movies are. You've got three different people who saw the exact same movie. We all feel totally different ways about totally different things. So I, I will classify it kind of like in the same vein of dumb fun. Like, you know, the like the movies that you watch, like you and I, when we watch Man from Toronto, that's not a good movie. No, that's not a good movie. <laughs> but it is dumb fun. And so I guess because I've seen such great MCU movies, like I expect more than just dumb fun and me to be able to pick at like narrative things that just don't work. And it should be they've been doing this for so long so far that like I expect more from them. No, that's fair. And like I said, like different things are going to work different ways for different people. Uh, and and the Ant-Man movies have always been kind of, I hate to use the phrase mixed bag, but kind of like that where it's, it tends, those tend to be the, the fun the ones. Thing. They, they, I love the first one. The first Ant-Man is incredible. I um, like both but, the first two. <laughs> but Ant-Man does tend to be kind of the fun character in these movies. His stories tend to be kind of the less impactful as it were, and this was the first time they gave him one that was meant to have like genuine stakes to the MCU at large. Um, so we'll see where they just where they end up going from here because there's still so this, this especially with the way it ended. There's there's a lot a lot of different paths we can take here, and we know that we know that Secret Invasion is coming this year. Loki season two is coming this year. Uh, the Marvels. Um, you know, you know, we're, we're, we'll see what's going to be coming, uh, especially from this year. So, all right. Well, that's all of our thoughts on, on Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania. We've all seen it. Uh, we've all talked about it. We'd love to hear what you guys think, whether you liked it, disliked it. If you're in the middle like Soul, if you hated it like Boggs, if you loved it like me, whatever, whatever the case might be, let us know down in the comments. Make sure you guys also let us know on Twitter. All of our information is in the description of this video. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we will see you guys again next time here on Off the Wall. Bye.